So for day three of Tutorial Week, I was going to cover a depth of field. Uh, if you don't know what depth of field is, uh, it's defined as the distance between the nearest and farthest objects in a scene that are to be maintained in focus. Um, you'll, in movies, you'll see it as the blur in a background behind the actor that you're looking at. Uh, so SFM can do this, uh, but it takes a little trick in, uh, playing around to try to get it to look right. Uh, so I rendered a little scene here, just a, a little talking scene. I just took some animation I had made for something else um, between Lyra and Bon Bon. And you can see in the beginning here that everything's in focus. Even though uh, Lyra is the one talking, uh, you, everything from the, that's not to be paid attention to, the background, Bon Bon here, is distracting. You, they're in focus. And so you can see that it has infinite depth of field right now. Everything, the closest and the farthest objects are all in focus. Uh, so here's I rendered this scene again uh, with the at, uh, depth of field on. I might have overdone it a little bit, but um, you'll see that now the objects that are closer, like bottom right here, and the background are blurred, but Lyra is kept in focus. Uh, it makes us your eyes want to drift and focus on her and to stay on her. Um, and so it may not be useful in every type of scene uh, to have something of this of this strong of a uh, of depth of field but you can see that it definitely does give a more professional quality look to it uh, so here I'll show both side by side um, the one on the left is the one with the depth of field off and the ones on there's more to it than just the background being blurred since the focus is on the face um, you can even see that some of these edges on the on the main on the on the back are softer and it's just, it just gives a much more realistic look to it, how you would expect um, a movie quality uh, to look. If you had to pick between the two, I'm thinking the one on the right is going to look a little better. So here we'll I'll go in here and open up SFM and I kind of went back and redid the scene so that it's from scratch and to kind of show how you do it. Uh, the first thing you want to do is to make sure that you have your render settings right. So if you right click the viewport here and go to render settings Default, it keeps all the, the uh, progressive refinements on, but it puts them to like the use camera settings. That's a very low setting. You'll probably want to turn these up. The higher it is, the longer it'll take to render. Um, usually, it's anything between 64 and 128 is going to be about a, uh, the highest you'll want to go. Uh, just for speed reasons, I'll put it up to 64. Um, it'll, if you put those too high, your render will take a very long time. Uh, so put that to 64. And the only time you'll see a preview of depth of field is with when you're within the clip editor. If you're in the motion editor or the graph editor, you won't see it. It'll just have that little uh, speckles for the ambient occlusion, and everything will be in focus. So right now, if you go to this uh, to the clip editor, you're not going to really notice anything because we haven't set it up. So the two settings you want to worry about are on the camera, and there are your focal distance and your aperture. Your focal distance is going to be the point of focus for which. Uh, the camera is to maintain that that depth of field um, and aperture is how wide is that depth of field having it very low as in this case makes it so that it is very wide very long and basically making an infinite depth of field making it very very large drops that that band if you make it too low uh, you, you could start actually having problems even just keeping the target focus but I'll show you that so Right now, if you grab the focal distance here, when you're in the motion editor or the graph editor, uh, you'll notice it'll pop up a little like uh, moving purple square thing. That middle square uh, is going to be your point of focus. As soon as you let go, you'll notice it disappears. If you were, are working with your depth of field, you can go right click, go to display, and then sh uh, show focal plane this will turn that on permanently it won't go away now so you can much it's much easier to work with so since Lyra is the one we want to focus we'll drop our focal distance until we get that square into her face there so we'll say that should be pretty good all right so now it's uh it's focused on there and if actually if you go to the uh if you're floating around here um let's turn that off for a sec You'll notice on the uh, the camera fulstrum, and the camera fulstrum is these lines that are coming from the camera showing you the scene. The little purple box that you see there is your focal distance. So you can actually see in 3D where it is uh, if you aren't having any luck doing it from the actual camera itself. So let's turn that back on. Okay. Now, 
if you go and to your preview, actually I'll keep that out here, uh, in the clip editor still you won't see anything change. That's because the aperture is too low. While you're choosing the point of focus, it's not giving you that, that blur that you want. So if you turn aperture up here, uh, let's say you put up about a third, and go back to the clip editor, you'll start to see that things are starting to get a little blurred back there. Um, Bonbon's not looking too blurred, but uh, if we, that's why I want to put the setting up a little more. Let's, let's try it about a little over half here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So now we're getting that, that blur in the background, the blur here, and we're getting lighter to maintain in focus. I can't preview like this because uh, SFM doesn't allow you to preview for a final setting. It just goes back to speckles. But um, but for a still, you can see kind of what your, um, what your depth of field is going to look like. If you turn it too far up, um, you'll start to get really blurred. Um, if, if you want to say, like, let's, let's even increase it even more. It, you can go a little bit out there and start getting... It, it starts to look a little bit creepy. Um, and that's not the effect you're going to be wanting to go for. Normally, I usually have the aperture somewhere around... Uh, let's put that back down. Probably about halfway up for most things. Uh, but it just comes down to looking at the clip editor and look at the scene and say, is this look right? Sometimes just doing a quick render to see if, uh, if, if what the animating that you've done works um, and to see if that's what you want it to look like. Um, the uh, uh, If you want to animate that, because like say, uh, I'll just do a quick bit here, say that the camera is moving, moving backwards here. So let's select some time here. And we'll have the camera, say, move back here. We wouldn't actually do that in a scene, but... Uh, oh, a little higher. Okay, so we'll go back here. Okay, so now the camera's going uh, to move to back here. But now Lyra's blurred. Because the if you look at the focal plane, it's still in the same spot. So it's still trying to keep focus on her face from the beginning of the scene, but now it's moved. Well, if you you can animate the focal plane to follow with it. So now that right here, we're at this distance, I'm going to change animate this focal plane to kind of follow with it and move it to... Okay, actually, yeah, the problem here, I can't move it far enough. It tops out at 200, and I kind of did this already, but you can remap these slider ranges. So if you right-click it, say remap slider range, and so right now it's saying that the min and max is between 1 and 200. Well, we want to go a little farther, so let's make the max 300. Now, you should be able to increase the distance a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so now the focus is on Lyra's face. So if we turn that off... Alright, now you see the focus is on Lyra. And we still have the blurred background. Uh, bon Bon's not as blurred, but it's because we turned. She's kind of in there now. Um, so, yeah, this is just uh, kind of a, uh, a simple way to give a lot of depth uh, to a conversation a lot of, and to help maintain the viewer's focus on a specific point. And if done correctly, you can really give some really nice effects and it gives a really professional look to some of the stuff you do. Um, that's all for the depth of field one. Um, for number four tomorrow, I was going to cover... Uh, lighting, uh, mainly on how to make a sun. So check back then. Otherwise, uh, have fun.